Hello there, and welcome to episode 78 of Jaga Vision. I'm Jared Nyberg. Um, I am your host, and you can go and check out our store and our shop and our fun s projects we're doing at jagasilk.com if you want to see some details on, on future shows and all that fun stuff. Um, 78th week doing this. There's lots of uh, good uh, conversations up on, on, on YouTube. Um, so if you're watching this from YouTube, uh, click subscribe um, and sign up and you will get notifications when we go live. And we do these sessions every Thursday. Uh, last week we had a wonderful session talking with the writers of uh, one of my favorite tea books, um, History, uh, Terroir and Varieties by the Camellia Sinensis Tea House. That was really, really fun. Um, we sometimes have farmers live from origin. Um, and in this case, we also have farmers live from origin, but that origin happens to be uh, Canada. So we're going to have... Um, uh, Elizabeth and Eckhart joining us uh, at, at around 1.15 um, uh, to talk about their growing practices. We love to use their herbs in our herbal teas whenever we possibly can. Um, so we're really excited to have them on and to discuss this and go over some details, etc. And uh, yeah, uh, super stoked um, to uh, have them join us. Um, but uh, like I always do, or w like I always try to do anyways, um, I love to make a tea that I haven't had a chance to, 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 to drink yet. Um, something that, uh, that I've been really, uh, enjoying doing. So yeah, let's get to it. <laughs> um, so the tea that I was thinking of trying was actually, uh, my, was an oolong. Um, you know what? Uh, I thought I had this, uh, all set up and ready to rock and roll, but apparently I don't. So if you'll be, give me one second, I'll be right back. Okay, uh, sorry about that. I have my teas now. I have you live, visually seeing me. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna be making now is a is a rogue. So this is a really um, well, s ostensibly very nice Wuyi Mountain selection. Um, I actually had a. Um, a fellow visiting uh, visit us from the region a number of years ago, uh, from Wuyi Mountain in China. Um, he's a um, he's a, a, a black matter scientist, if you can believe it, um, and he really uh, just wanted to share tea. So at first, I thought he was he was there to maybe sell us on some teas, um, but that was not the case. He just honestly just wanted to um, to share in his love for tea, and so that was a really interesting experience to just have these amazing teas that I couldn't buy because he didn't really have um, it wasn't that wasn't the purpose uh, he had very little interest in talking about some sort of uh, vendor relationship because that's not what he did he was a scientist who just loved tea um, so anyway uh, he introduced us to Da Hong Pao um, from the corner region of Wuyi Mountain I'd had Da Hong Pao's before um, and they, there's a lot of hype around them. They, uh, they're supposed to be this uh, like most expensive tea um, in terms of like uh, fresh teas. Um, and he, they're they're uh, a roasted oolong. They got this really beautiful sort of sugary component. The Maillard reaction that really draws out that sugar development is is, is so interesting um, to drink. Um, and there's just such a, a fascinating um, opportunity to taste this floral sort of roasty dynamic with these teas. Um, so I'm gonna, so I like to kind of, why do I even use the, the tea tray, hey? If I'm just gonna weigh my tea, that's a good question. Okay, so I guess it's my, my easy to access gray water bucket. And well, I'm getting used to a new device. I don't really use the uh, Gaiwan so much. Um, it's a really nice way to cup your tea, though, because it's glazed on the inside. Um, that means that you're not going to have uh, any sort of uh, impact on the tea flavor that's being generated from the from the the teapot. Um, it's a very neutral environment um, that you can sort of access to. Uh, to really try and understand the teas that you're drinking. Okay, so while that's brewing, and I'm doing that Gong Fu Cha style, <coughs> I'll get myself a cup. And I'll pour that out. 
pardon the explosion of green behind me there. I was uh, milling some tea and there was a little bit of an accident right before I went live. So, um, okay, smells amazing. It's quite an expensive uh, oolong sample that I'm drinking from uh, from a Mr. Thai. He does uh, our uh, some of our reserve teas we're going to be releasing this year. Um, a really interesting. Oh wow, that smells amazing. Mm. Yeah, very nicely done. That is a really good tea. Yeah, it smells like orchid and there's like this kind of cooked apricot thing happening. This is a very nice tea. Mm. So yeah, we um, we essentially have been looking at bringing in a Wuyi Mountain Oolong for quite some time, but we put a lot of uh, yeah, we put a, a, a lot of energy into these direct relationships. And I'll be honest, the reason why we haven't brought in Mr. Size Tea is because uh, he was introduced to us by um, by a farmer from Yellow Mountain. And as much as it's awesome to be able to trace things to him, it's not as awesome as the relationship that we have with, uh, with Mr. Chen in Phoenix Mountain. Now, Phoenix Mountain and Wuyi Mountain are very different tea styles. Um, you, you're normally going to see a darker roast uh, coming out of Wuyi Mountain. And um, you're going to see something a little bit more floral uh, coming out of out of Phoenix Mountain, as a general sort of rule of thumb. Um, but uh, um, our selection, we we often cup them side by sides, and and time and time again in blind cuppings, I, I come away really enjoying the complexity of flavor that I'm getting out of uh, Chen's selections. So hopefully, though, we could do a side by side. This year, and maybe we could bring in some Wuyi Mountain teas from Sai because this is pretty fantastic stuff. Hmm. Anyway, um, I uh, we've hit 115. I'm going to see if our guests have arrived yet. Um, Eckhart and Elizabeth, I, I think you are around. Uh, if you're there, do you mind uh, picking up? Uh, oh, I think I hear. Hello. Hello. Okay, fantastic. So that is. Uh, hold on one second. Now our audience can see you. Fantastic, welcome, um, Elizabeth Eckhart uh, from uh, Chickadee out in uh, out in Alberta. Um, I guess we have uh, Eckhart. You're in. Are you in uh, at the farm and and uh, and Elizabeth? Yeah, yeah, yes, okay. I'm at the farm uh, and Elizabeth in Edmonton. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, well, thank you very much for coming on uh, Jaga Vision. Um, we're in our seventeenth, uh, sorry, seventy eighth. <laughs> big difference episode uh and i've wanted to actually have you guys on for quite a long time um do you guys could you maybe uh tell the audience um uh, who you are um and and maybe a little bit about chickadee and and wh what the role the role that you play maybe we could start with uh, elizabeth um yeah mine's shorter i'm elizabeth and um my role is mostly supposed to be office admin and uh holding down the fort so that's sort of what I do but I participate in the garden and uh, all of the other stuff packing orders and stuff like that so. okay and, and and chickadee chickadee how long has chickadee been around oh chickadee's been around a long time I've only been with the company since we had kids um, uh, that's been nine years now okay okay so it's an old company. Maybe um, Eckhart, you want to tell everybody a little bit about what you guys, uh, what, what you do for at Chickadee, and and maybe a little bit more about uh, about the the project. Okay. Um, uh, thanks, Jared, for having us on. Um, it's really neat to be on <laughs> with you. And I was looking at some of the um, other um, videos you'd put out and learned a lot about uh, about green tea. Cool. So yeah, about Chickadee Farm. Um, I'm uh, one of four kids here raised on the farm and uh, took over the farm from, from my parents. Uh, so Elizabeth and I are, are operating the farm now. Um, we dated back to 1989, so we're over 30 years now that we've been growing herbal teas. Cool. Uh, we, we're on a small mixed farm. Uh, my parents started with sheep and we still have sheep but our land base wasn't big enough uh, to uh, live from that. So um, the herb farm actually started as a garlic farm. 
Okay. So for about uh, starting around 89 there for about 10 years, uh, we were trying to grow garlic and uh, just had some challenges uh, with it and uh, you know got some good crops but also had some issues and uh, alongside of that we were also drying tea in the same facilities that we used for the garlic okay so uh, the tea uh, kept uh, well over winter like once you got it dried it was safe and stuff like that so like it didn't spoil because that was a bit our big issue with the garlic right so anyway i'm on about the tea so yeah. from there, it just kind of grew. Uh, my parents were using tea to teas uh, or herbs, uh, medicinal herbs, to uh, treat animals and, and oh, for themselves and, and, and for us kids and stuff like that. So uh, my father actually has a background collecting herbs in Germany, and so he brought that knowledge with him. Was he, a, was he a wild forager, or uh, did he grow a farm, or or what was uh, what was he what was his well, it, German it would have been as, as a kid uh, just to earn a little bit of extra money. Um, he was wild foraging, so they were yeah. picking, you know, Saint John's wort, Yarrow, Valerian root, things like that. He describes Valerian where he would just pull a plant up, you know, swish it in the creek, and then bring it down to the local apothecary. Oh wow! Okay. And you know, they paid a few cents for it, so. So anyway, he had knowledge of the herbs from that, um, and then that, yeah, just slowly <clears throat> fed in. And you know, it's it's been a slow evolution over the last thirty years, but um, grew from just sort of a side business to it's the main uh, enterprise on the farm now. Wow, very cool. So it's been a it's been a process. Uh, you know, one of uh, 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 my um, uh, I guess uh, another person that I, I work with in the industry, um, the owner of the gathering place, I think uh, Lovna works with you guys. And I've had one of my guests, another guest I had on the show, um, Alexandra from Sargessa. I understand she works with you guys. It's, it's kind of a cool community of, of people that that um, that have been, you know, sourcing your herbs. And and I guess this has been a process that's happened over time, but uh, I can only imagine how challenging um, it must be also in, 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 in the environment that you're in. I mean, you're you're pretty far up north, right? Like this is not um, what people when people think like herbal farm. Um, they're 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 probably not thinking uh, north of Edmonton in Alberta and Canada. Um, but uh, you're 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 not only producing herbs uh, in bulk. You're also doing like a, such an awesome job that I think some people that are really careful with the flavors that they bring in are are really excited about what you guys are doing. Um, maybe you guys want to speak to uh, that process like how that's developed over time like maybe that's a too big of a question but uh just this idea of um i guess taking it from those those roots and now you, you you're at this place where i don't know maybe you're not this massive corporation but <laughs> but uh, but you're, you're, look, you're looking at the company right now <laughs> there you go <laughs> you know it's interesting well, and, my, and my mom my mom isn't on screen but uh, she's an integral part of it in the background so awesome uh, but you you're you're managing to put together and i guess it's it's this interesting middle ground hey because like as a as a tea company myself like i'm when i'm sourcing herbs ideally i would be or sourcing um uh you know like always uh local always you know but it, it's it seems that it's really hard for people to go from that process of of say growing some herbs in um in the 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 guard the garden to um having um uh, to, to, to taking that and making it into a business that maybe they're doing at a farmer's market and then taking that and, 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 and making it into something that they supply wholesale and taking that and, do, and do, doing it where, you know, they can sell 40, 50 kilograms of product at a time. There's, it's such a, a process to get there, right? And welcome Sherianne uh, from Sister Speak. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> awesome. Um, maybe, uh, uh, oh, Sherianne, this is uh, Elizabeth uh, and Eckhart of, of, of Chickadee Farm. Um, out in Edmonton, cool. um, they make the oh. they grow the peppermint that's in that peppermint yuzu elderflower that I believe you're drinking in. Washington. Oh wow, yeah. it's so delicious! I have it right here with me. Nice, nice. <laughs> food. <laughs> awesome. Um, uh, do you guys uh, uh, maybe want to talk a little bit about that process of taking it from uh, a smaller? Um, maybe did you just answer that question? Am I asking you to repeat yourself in your story <laughs> that you just did? Or no, I I think they the well. What I'm understanding from your question is sort of the process of scale up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank uh, you. That would clarify it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, 
and and you're speaking to something that's sort of an ongoing challenge. I mean, I had a conversation with Elizabeth about it yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're we're at we're going to um, inventory our largest uh, harvest ever, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that should relate to um, certain profit margins and a certain sense of profitability, but. Uh, we're definitely still challenged there, mm -hmm. uh, and so the joys of small of, business. <laughs> yes, it gets into small business management. So, um, which I know, I, from speaking for myself anyway, I'm I am uh, much sort of more confident in the garden and in the drying shed <laughs> than I'm with with the, with that part. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what we are finding is yes, going from the garden to maybe an add-on to a market garden business to a dedicated business, is, which is where we're at. Um, of course, you you face challenges in growing, so you need more growing space. Um, I mean, the inputs are fairly l low, so uh, seed cost is low because you just need a few few seeds uh, typically. Um, you know, some potting soil, that sort of thing. Maybe some greenhouse uh, infrastructure uh, to get your seedling started. Mm -hmm. Um, you do need garden space. We're probably operating about six acres now. Okay. Uh, plus we wildcraft in the forest as well. So, I mean, that's another opportunity for, you know, people sort of, uh, like we had some visitors here recently who were looking to, I wouldn't say export, but, you know, we're looking to gain knowledge to uh, try to do what we were doing in Australia. Uh, so um, there's wild crafting uh, that can help to bring volume up. And so there's sort of a space between ten thousand dollars and a hundred thousand dollars where you're, you know, like that's a fairly big gap. But there's uh, there's sort of a lot of um, you need a bigger building, you need more equipment, you need to do stuff faster because there's only so many hours in the day. So that's kind of where we're at now. Is uh, we've scaled up our growing system, our planting system, our drying system hasn't changed a whole lot. So we're definitely running into the limits on that mm. and then the market changes as well so yeah there's a lot of different factors right. um, on the market it's interesting like we're finding that the market changes about every five years or so there's a major upheaval right um, and so like the last one for us was that we were uh, we had a bigger retail presence and then a large um, natural food store um, went out of business and uh, so we lost the space there mm -hmm. and it also shifted more toward um, we had more and more inquiries from herbalists oh interesting uh, and then of course with the pandemic happening people were ordering from home so online started to pick up so mm -hmm. yeah there's just um it's hard to put one's finger on any given thing but there's a multitude of factors that play into you know scaling the business up to a point where you know where it works that's interesting about the drying shed too. Like we, we um, uh, just that you're doing a lot of the same drying techniques uh, as a smaller farm that you would as a medium sized, or I don't know if you, you probably still consider yourself small, but like big enough to supply wholesale to a small company like myself. Um, you, 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 you know, I'm, I, uh, when we're doing kombucha, for example, um, it's such an interesting uh, process to, to look at and say like, you know, how much of this is sort of like a kitchen operation and how much of this you know like what can i do to make this a little bit more streamlined and more efficient and turn it more into like a a micro brewery or in our case a nano brewery concept or or with our blending for our chives and our london fogs we just got a blending machine i'm pretty excited about that's going to be coming soon and and i, I wonder how that process is going to look but i'm always afraid that when i scale up i'm going to bring in a piece of machinery that actually slows me down that looks fancy um but <laughs> at the end of the day i'm going to get a lower quality product um, uh, because I've invested in some sort of machinery that maybe I didn't understand when I was purchasing. Have you ever experienced it, that? Oh, sorry, Sharon, has, please. Yeah. Go. No, I'm just curious if that's happened to either of you yet. Yeah. Or not yet, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have you guys uh, uh, purchased some streamlining machinery and, and, and had it um, maybe not uh, go, as, go as planned? Well, I think I, every time... I don't know if we've ever purchased any, but Eckhart has made and built many different pieces that have streamlined and um, increased production. Mm -hmm. And with each of those pieces of equipment, there's always a bit of tweaking that needs to happen sure. to get it back to 
the same level or better. Usually we end up better than it was before. Mm. Um, but yeah, there's always a learning curve with each piece of machinery and then eventually you figure out how to do it right. what, as you did before. What uh, that's uh well, what's an, I guess maybe, well, the, the viewers are watching, um, maybe to clarify something like, what is the process of something, say, popular, like peppermint look like on an herbal tea farm like you guys? Like, what, what, if you were going to take us through an A to B um, uh, without giving away too many trade secrets of, of what that uh, process looks like to process uh, from, from the harvest, or I guess even before the harvest, uh, planting um, to the end, what, what, what does that timeline look like? And what does that process look like out of curiosity? So uh, for the peppermint, um, it's interesting. You mentioned earlier the northern climate we're in. So we're at 50, uh, 54 degrees north here. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're two hours north of Edmonton. So basically, you know, smack dab in the middle of Alberta. Uh, and we're climate zone two. Uh, so at this point, there's no more leaves on the trees. Um, and it's going to stay like that until uh, about the middle of May. Wow. Okay. Uh, we're, uh, I bring it up because it relates to peppermint. Um, peppermint is borderline uh, winter hardy for us. Okay. So some years it will make it through the winter, some years it won't. So what we're doing every year is we're uh, gathering up some of the plants or the roots, most importantly, bedding them uh, into some potting soil, and putting them in the root cellar. And then in spring, we all start propagating because uh, it's uh, vegetative propagation for the variety that we use. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're, the process starts, um, I'm gonna target St. Patrick's Day essentially to bring the uh, pots as I have, I shot it, I, I looked at some of my old pictures and uh, that's kind of when we bring the uh, pots out of the root cellar. Okay and expose them to light and the, the uh, peppermint uh, shoots start to grow. Um, and then we're taking cuttings and sticking them into potting soil. Uh, the cuttings get grown in the greenhouse until probably uh, about the end of May uh, to uh, early June. We're planting them out in the garden. Okay. And we can take the first harvest uh, in the beginning of August, and then if we're lucky, uh, we can get a second cut sort of mid-September, mm -hmm. uh, late September. Depending so on that's the, the growing process. Yeah. And then um, we need to uh, wash the herb uh, to get the soil uh, from the garden. Like there's splash, rain splash on it. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're growing in rows in sort of a typical mark, mark garden setup. I know it might be something else you would be interested in, we can talk about uh, our move toward uh, less tillage and that sort of thing, but yeah. following along with the, with the peppermint process. So we're washing it, putting it in the dryers. Mm -hmm. it takes about 30 hours or so to dry it. Um, okay. I'm using forced air dryers uh, because uh, we find that. Oh and uh, is exposed uh, to moisture through the night um, that will cause it to discolor. Mm. Uh, so we're trying to have it as green as possible. So mm. if we can just kind of keep steady drying with warm, dry air, uh, even through the night, then we'll get it dry in sort of just over a day. Uh, then it's garbled through screens, uh, screened down to size, uh, chopped, and then ready for shipping. Um, that, that, um, that, uh, drying process do you do like a, a, a do you measure like how much uh, moisture you lose during that process or do you have like a starting weight and ending weight like they do in japan with the when they're drying tea um and my other question is is it on raised beds or are you drying on the ground what's the wh how does that process look so the the drying is happening in our drying shed so um everything is clean and we have procedures in place to you know, make sure it's so it's it's happening um, I don't if if you look up uh, marijuana drying, uh, there's lots of drying racks. <laughs> so much similar so like that. You, sort of that, that you must get you must get teased growing herbs. <laughs> we get we get teased all the time. We have scales and and, and green powder, and uh, it's oh. uh, yeah, it's an ongoing joke. Um, okay. Um, but is there like a mass uh, like how, is it all done by feel and smell like uh, is there how do you ensure that your 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 moisture loss is uh, that you're trying to do to to achieve via the drying process is complete is it is it just through experience or are you using some sort of um, tool to measure it or w w how does that how does that look 
so I have to admit it's it's pretty artisanal in that regard. Um, our hands are pretty sensitive to like any amount of moisture, so sure. we reach in and uh, squeeze the herb, and if it's you know crunching, the leaves are breaking off the stems, mm -hmm. then it's good to go. Um, I have used uh, equipment uh, to test it. Um, the lowest that the tester I used was went was 14% moisture content, and the herb tested well below that. Okay, yeah, because it needs to be, what, like 5% or less to be shelf-stable? Is that how it works? I can't quite remember, but um, that is that's that is interesting. Okay, so, but you, I remember talking to you over the phone one time, and you mentioned something about th that drying process being extremely important for flavor. I guess if you don't dry it properly, you're going to find out pretty fast when you go to drink it uh, that it's not in an ideal place. Well, we're, we're fortunate that we're dealing with medicinal herbs um, and uh, culinary herbs, so basically we just get it dry. I know that the process with uh, real teas is um, more complex, uh, but for us it's just simply a matter of getting it as dry as possible. You'd be surprised. Uh, every, every farm is different. There, I mean, that we've visited, some are like measuring everything on a scale, like they have these old analog scales that are on a bed. Um, and you put the basket on and then you dry and you fill the basket again and see where you're at and you record your starting <laughs> and your ending weight and that gives you sort of an idea of the moisture loss via the drying process. But then there's also farmers um, uh, where they just do exactly like you're talking about. They put their hands in the pile, they squeeze it, they kind of get a sense of where it is and they're just everything is by touch and experience. So I think that, that both systems are, 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 are equally viable um, uh, uh, systems in my opinion anyway from what I've seen. Oh. Well, and one has to know the herbs, so um, the uh, leafy uh, herbs like lemon balm or peppermint, it's very easy, and when the leaves crunch off of the stems, they're dry. Mm -hmm. um, we try to usually screen when the stems are a little tough still. Mm -hmm. uh, it allows us to pull more stems out in the first screen or screening or, or garbling phase, which happens inside of the dryers. Mm. Uh, that, that's I, called garbling? That's an awesome word. Garbling is uh, the... the that's removing the stem? Yes. Uh, I mean, we, we, we were calling it screening for a long time. And then we finally, after 30 years, we read a book about herb farming. And, and they, <laughs> called it, <laughs> they called it carpeling. Nice. Um, and, okay. and, our, and our visitors, actually, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, they, they also referred to carpeling. So I, I guess that's... Yeah, it's sort of just uh, reducing the bulk of the initial dry products. You you know you put it in the dryers. Yeah. I mean, in the dryers, it's probably losing ninety percent of its weight. Right. Uh, so I I have that information for roots. So we also we do flowers, we do roots, mm. um, and uh, so we we have different tests. So depending like with the flowers, for example, we'll take the center of the flower and break it. Mm -hmm. um, if you know five or ten centers break. Um, then we know that the batch is dry. Um, if we get a little bit of toughness, then it needs to stay in a bit longer. Uh, camo is one, for example, that you have to be careful with because um, if it's uh, getting more toward the seedy stage, the seeds may not be fully cured even though the flowers themselves look dry. So we've had it where batches uh, discolor slightly. They're still a very fragrant and I think still very good, but mm -hmm. then if we catch that, like we'll check it early on, then we'll actually dry them down some more to make sure they're fully dry to keep. Yeah. Um, with the roots, we're just taking little pieces and breaking. So I know with the roots, I'm losing about, well, my yield is 35%. So when I, when I put in, you know, I weigh some roots and I put them in the dryer, when I pull them out, uh, I get about 35%. Oh, interesting. So I get, okay. I mean, so you're tracking that that moisture loss, and you're 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 making sure you record it. That's, that's I mean, um, that's really uh, uh, fascinating. the The process of of, of making tencha is it, it kind of reminds me of this cut and sift uh, process, um, and that's the the raw botanical that's meant for ma matcha milling, um, and they actually put it on a conveyor belt system that that once it's dried out and dried flat, they push it through this this sieve system that breaks it apart. You have the veins and the stems. Um, uh, and then they use air in a cyclone system to blow the, the lighter leaf part to the left and keep the stemmy part on the right. The stem and, then, and then, get this, this is kind of crazy. They use electromagnetic technology um, to, uh, to um, um, make it so that the, the colors uh, are divided 
Um, and so you actually get different grades from within the same leaf going into separation systems, <laughs> which is pretty intense. Oh. But it's, it's, it's kind of cool. And I always, I always, I mean, we've grown some of our own herbs, um, and I've been really happy with the, with the product. Um, of course, we don't have a farm, so it's not like we can produce uh, volume. But I've always been intrigued by that garbling process. And, and I just imagine some giant sieve that you're, like, kind of pushing the herbs <laughs> <laughs> through. But it's not like that, is it? Well, it, it is actually, yeah. Oh, um, it is. Okay. The the the, the shelves. So, um, I I'm not. I have uh, a picture. You do. Okay. Of, yeah, well, it's to. old, so I hope Eckhart's not embarrassed. <laughs> okay. It's like one of the first ones that we took. I don't know if I can. You can if you hit present on the the Google Meet, then you choose the 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 here. I'll uh, make sure that we're not. Uh... So I think I. So let's go a window and there so you got it i think can do you see yeah, that it's loading it's loading let's see oh there we go okay so this yeah. is this oh, is a much cool. younger eckhart and his <laughs> sister nice um, okay and they are loading raspberry leaves so you can see i don't know does it show did you guys know that raspberry leaf is in sister speaks uh blend by the way okay so this um, is okay oh is that your raspberry leaf <laughs> yeah sorry is that your raspberry leaf? We use their raspberry leaf in the blend. Yes. Sorry, we interrupted. Oh, amazing! <laughs> so there's a shelf down here uh -huh. that, um, and you can't see the screens because, of course, it's covered. But it's just a, a screen, a mesh screen. Okay. What are the sides of? I don't know. It doesn't matter how big the holes are. But yeah, you just push the, get a lot of side arm movement push garbling the screen uh, garbling the herb through the screens so. oh cool okay so it's almost this, is it like a like a hinge on the other side and you kind of press it down and that, that no. okay no it's not but you just you just move your hands back and forth in this sort of motion and that's and it pushes it through oh that's so it interesting. pushes it through the screen huh so. yeah i have um i have a friend who does herbal farming in quebec and uh uh i don't think he does much garbling he likes to keep it whole but my goodness, it makes such a difference when we're making herbal teas um, to have it in that cut and sifted place because I don't know what I would do if I was working with whole everything. Like, how, how big is the, the raspberry leaves before you do the garbling process? Well, um, raspberry leaves... They're, they're about the size of your... Sorry? Yeah. Go, go ahead, Elizabeth. About the size, not quite the size of your hand sometimes, maybe about the palm of your hand. Okay, okay, interesting. And, and then, the yeah, when it when you garble it through, it comes, the pieces are fairly big, like they might be quarter size or more, and then the, um, the petioles from the leaf comes, usually goes through the screen as well, but huh. um, okay. at least for raspberry. Raspberry doesn't lose too much when it's being garbled, uh -huh. but it allows us to put it into boxes and things. Cool. Do you have Do you have any other production picks that we can show the uh, the the audience, or is uh, is this our the pick of the um, day? <laughs> I can. The ones that I have, I should ask Eckhart because the ones I have are pretty old. I think Eckhart might have some too. E Eckhart, are, are we cool looking at old <laughs> old photos of you? Is this is this okay? Oh, did we lose him? Uh, it's it's okay. Can you can you see? Um, I can't see that. Um, we have a black screen. I mean, you might have to choose a different tab when you're when you're presenting, and then we should be able to see. Okay. Do you want to try? Maybe you're probably you on your iPad. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that didn't quite work. But maybe you. Uh, um, are you able to open the? Sorry. Uh, yes, I, I'm. I'm trying. I don't know if the iPad supports me. Um, like, if it'll show. Um, I, I have an album of pictures from this year oh. um, that I made for this, but um, I'm not sure if I'll get to them. Why don't you um, quickly email so them I'll, to me I'll and then I can bring them up here to share my... That's a good idea. Do you want to try emailing them to Elizabeth, and then uh, we might be able uh, to. She might be able to present them. Are you able to make an album? I and mean, if you use Google Photos, it's oh, oh. It's, uh, it's a pretty easy process. You could just select them and then uh, hit send, and then uh, <laughs> and then we could see them. That would be amazing. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not very competent with Google because um, I, I work in the Apple. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Fair uh, enough. No, it's it was it, a little bit of um, maybe um, if if sorry. I can, I'll try sharing. I don't know if my microphone will stay on. I'll try sharing my screen and just let me know if this works because I, I do have the file up. OK, let's 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 hope for the best. We might we might lose. So it says because it. We, we still have you. We can see you. We can't see the pictures yet. No, it's not. It doesn't want to do it. It's uh, allowing you to. Yeah, it's going to a, a black screen when. Uh... Um, it's it's kind of working on it here. Okay. All right. Let's hope for the best. This would be amazing if. Uh... Eckhart is also working with super slow internet because out there you just don't get. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. No. It's uh. And you, maybe you want to talk a little bit about that, uh, Elizabeth? The, the 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 farm is is solar powered, if I understand correctly. Mm, yeah. Wow. Um, well, we're um, it was completely off grid until 2015, I believe. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then we upgraded to a solar array, a larger solar array. But we decided to go with a grid tie because if you don't have a grid tie, you need to have a generator and batteries and okay. you need to be able to charge the batteries even in winter which is not the sun won't charge the batteries fully in the winter time so you need to be able you need to have a big generator to charge the batteries through the winter otherwise you lose your batteries ah. so to buy the battery bank and the generator and then the fuel to power it all mm. was going to cost almost as much as bringing in power from the grid and being a grid tie so and since Eckhart's parents are the ones who live on the farm full time and would be taking care of the the infrastructure we decided or they decided to go with the grid tie just to make it a little bit easier on themselves and um so it is not have the responsibility of having to make sure that those batteries were always charged properly. Mo mostly solar powered. Semi semi we are mostly semi solar grid. powered. <laughs> like we are, our farm generates enough power for us over the year. I think we've been net zero since we got it. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and okay. we charge a little bit of the neighbors as well. It's just that we are grid tie so that we don't have to deal with that extra work. Oh, fair. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so if I, I on my marketing materials, I often say that you know Elizabeth and Eckhart uh, growing um, uh, the peas off grid, but uh, it's it's semi off grid or it's it's basically off grid. We're, we're, we're it, well not, I, not in quite. the solar power <laughs> community, we would not be off grid. We're not as granola as that. Uh, fair, I guess. Fair, fair, fair. Um, it's still pretty cool. We're a grid tie, yeah. which if I don't see anything wrong with being no, a grid no, tie, not at all. <laughs> it makes. A lot of sense. I love these kinds of conversations because yeah. it's the practical world, right? We have this romantic ideal and then we have a practical world and, and oftentimes they intermarry. And in your situation, you don't really need the grid, but you're on it so that you don't need to build that infrastructure. Um, yeah. I mean, one of the drawbacks is, is when the power goes down on the grid, we don't have power either. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, so in the summertime, we do have, we do have a few backup generators to make sure, you know, if the greenhouses are running that the fans don't go down and stuff like that because right. on a 30 degree day if you don't have fans on your greenhouse is gonna be done Ooh, you, very quickly you're gonna be cooking soup in there that's yeah yeah so we do have those backup generators but they're not they're just little generators to run the fans um and we don't have to have this big yeah generator running off diesel fuel all the time in the winter so okay Cool. No, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I've always been really intrigued by that, and I hope I really do hope one of these days that uh, my wife and I can can get up there and 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 give the farm a visit. I think uh, you guys have offered to show us around a number of times, and uh, I'd love anytime. To <laughs> I'd love to take you up on that offer. It would be. I'm just so uh, intrigued by the whole process. I think that. Uh, well, you you know, um, to go back to when we first started working together, um, I used to buy my organic peppermint from um, a farm in Oregon. Um, and uh, it was it was it was beautiful enough. I was I was pretty uh, stoked about it. Um, it was uh, it was actually also uh, even though it was organic, it was pretty cheap. Um, and uh, I was just humming along. And then I came across your guys's work, and then I got samples from you guys. And it was 
amazing. Like I often show people, um, I don't know if you can see this on the call, okay, but um, there's a, a matcha I have that's two years old, okay? And I'm gonna compare it to a matcha that's, that's uh, I should probably let the, the guests see me too. Um, so if I, if I, these are essentially the same tea, okay? Can you can you see uh, so they can see that and I'll show you guys. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Pretty green, right? And that's the essentially the same tea and it's like completely brownish green. Isn't that? Yeah. And 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 essentially uh, this one is really nice and fresh. This one is 2 years old. And I remember looking at the peppermint uh, and comparing and although I don't think that what I was getting was old the color difference was absolutely striking in a way that really reminded me of this comparison. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe one of my questions might be how, how, like, why do you believe that what I was getting from Oregon was so much less menthol and so much uh, more muted color compared to what you guys are, are, are producing? Well, from what I understand, a lot of other herb dryers do is they let it air dry in a shed or a greenhouse or something like that okay um and what we do like in that picture i showed you of the kiln there's a door you have your shelves close the door you turn on the heater yeah the forced air furnace and you push that air and like eckhart said it takes 24 to 36 hours to dry a load but if you were to put it in a shed and let it air dry just on racks without the forced air heating, then it um, it will take longer. Yeah. And in the overnight, you'll get a little bit of more uptake in moisture, and all of that uptake in moisture and the length of time yeah. will cause that bleaching and more of the oh, what's the word? Um, those um, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> All of the f the the smell and everything the will all just evaporate. It. The vol 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 volatile oil. That's it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We talk about that a lot in tea. Okay. Yeah, they'll all just evaporate. Mm. And so we try to dry our tea as fast as we can and as evenly as we can. Like part of the reason we wash the peppermint, um, we'll wash pretty much everything now. Right. Or at least get it wet because we find that it dries from the outside of the the edges of the shelf to the center right. and as it's drying of course um the center of the the shelf is still alive still metabolizing so um if it's wet it'll stay fresher crisper longer so when it gets to drying it's still as alive as it weak as, as it can be and then it's oh, then it's dry instead of um sort of slowly wilting and then being done that that's, makes sense yo that's super fascinating there's a there's a um a process uh in tea um they refer to as enzymatic oxidation so it's allowing the prop uh poly poly huh? polyphenol oxidase enzyme the ppo enzyme um, mm -hmm. to uh, it, what it does is it browns the leaf and changes the cellular structure of the leaf as it's as it's wilting and to 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 freeze that process to keep it as a green tea you want to hit it with heat within 23 hours of harvest to do a process called kill green that that mm -hmm. deactivates that enzyme and it keeps it in the world of green tea if you want to have a green tea it's kind of interesting to me because i it sounds to me like with the the, the peppermint there's a by doing that forced drying and, s and ma ensuring that you're drying within that, that shorter time period, you may be or likely are deactivating some enzymes that would otherwise change the flavor and color of the leaf. Yeah. It's almost like a I'm just getting some texts. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Oh, Eckhart lost hit the internet. That's why he left. But he said he sent me some pictures. Okay. So I'm just uh, checking my email here. Sure, 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 sure. So okay. hopefully he can get back on. But yeah, the internet up there, it's one of our biggest frustrations that yeah. we don't have decent internet. Fair enough. Yeah, I've had uh, farmers on uh, uh, from Phoenix Mountain in China, and uh, uh, I, I, I we lost the call midstream three or four times. <laughs> <And> <laughs> having to reconnect and, and just figuring that out. You know, we're, uh, we're definitely blessed when we have a, 
uh, fast internet speed and and uh, and a lined in. I, I find it makes a big difference for me that I hardline my show because I used to do my show uh, on Wi-Fi and oh my goodness, <laughs> oh, oh yeah, what a mess that was. But uh, I imagine <laughs> even with a uh, hardline connection at the farm, it might not be the easiest thing to to do the video and the photos and all that. And, uh, oh yeah, oh there's Eckhart. Wonderful. Okay. Hello. Welcome back, Eckhart. <laughs> okay. Hi. Uh, yeah. Sorry. I was trying to send Elizabeth some pictures, but I'm um, between Apple versus uh, Google <laughs> and uh, the internet. Um, and it just all, they had a big fight and it just blew up. It's just what it about like. 60 <laughs> pictures I could have chosen from it. Um, but anyway. Since okay awesome well i'm excited to see them when they when they do come up um out of curiosity elizabeth did you get the tea that i sent you the peppermint use it elderflower did it show up in the end no it didn't okay oh that's too bad yeah we sent It'll it to come tomorrow or something right? i know yeah i sent it on monday and they promised it to you on wednesday but uh, i guess uh it didn't happen no. yeah but um well it's uh for the audience watching this is the tea right now that we just uh we often we have the the one i mentioned the honey bush marshmallow root and raspberry leaf that has your guys' raspberry leaf and uh, i'm trying to make it your marshmallow root too but we're still in discussions around that um this uh peppermint uh yuzu and elderflower the yuzu is actually from a farm in gifu an organic farm in gifu that we visited in 2019 and it's such a nice blend and I, I really am looking I hope that maybe when you do get a chance to drink it um, you can give me your 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 feedback on it because uh, it's with your 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 peppermint and I want to I want to know if you if you feel good about what we're doing <laughs> should be but yeah I love the, the the way the aromatics come through so did you, did you get the pictures there uh, Elizabeth are we gonna be able to check it I'm out? just trying to figure out where Eckhart sent them he said mail drop but I'm not really sure what that is Okay, it sounds like an Apple thing. Is it a? Do I don't know. <laughs> Is he a, he's okay. Well, you, and he's gone again. <laughs> he's gone again. You know, it might be that um, in your inbox, I don't know. Um, there might be a link that takes you to uh, to uh, um, sort of something you need to sign in. I, I I remember somebody giving me something from from. Uh, it could be he might have put them on their OneDrive. Ah. That would be a Microsoft product. That's always fun. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mail, mail Drop is an Apple product. Um, it's uh, it's if you go to, uh, I believe it's, um, yeah, Mail Drop. Uh, how do you get to it? I don't know, but it is definitely an Apple product. So he, it, he says it's, oh, maybe, maybe he sent it to the other email address. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm gonna, just while you're you're doing that, um, when, uh, when you are making it, I'll just give you kind of a, a little brief uh, show and tell of how uh, mm -hmm. we often recommend people make the tea. Um, I'm sure you have your own method and I'd love you to just make it how you would normally just make an herbal tea. Um, I'm super interested in that. I think it's, it's, it's really fun to, to just drink a tea the way you always have made it, you know? Um, but uh, another option for you is to um, weigh out four grams of tea. And I'm going to show the audience this too. Um, and then what we do is we um, um, we put the four grams here. We fill it with 90 degrees centigrade water, and we actually steep it for about three minutes. What is your what is your standard for uh, for brewing tea? Out of curiosity, do you have like do you do volume and do teaspoons? If so, how many teaspoons do you normally do? Do you change it depending on the tea? I take a handful of tea. A handful of tea. I throw it in a sieve. Okay, amazing. Okay. <laughs> pour boiling water over it. <laughs> amazing. Okay. Yeah. When it looks like the right color, I take the sieve out and then I drink it. Amazing. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's a uh, you know there's a there's a really fun one of my favorite styles of, of of tea making in the whole world is called gong fu cha, and you just take a handful of tea, <laughs> and you you put it in a little tiny teapot so that it gets really strong. Um, and then when it when it feels done, which is often if you pour water on top of the little teapot, the, these little three ounce teapots, um, then you uh, you uh, you just um, uh, pour it into your your cups and drink it. It uh, sounds like a really similar process. 
you know and when i also tell people that you know like if you've been working with the same tea and the same sort of brewing vessels for a while you often get a really good intuitive sense of how to make things taste good just uh based off of your experience and and that's that's a great process i often use weights and temperatures and time because um in my industry uh a lot of people are making these in cafes and and the idea is that the baristas could make the tea taste really similar from cup to cup so that when their customers are drinking it they feel that they can have that same experience each time that they go regardless of who's making it and that's why we you know weigh the tea weigh the water control the temperature and control the extraction time those kind of four main variables um, i have somebody in the chat um asking about uh Yes, or just saying that they're really enjoying the session, uh, particularly intrigued with the drying process, um, and interesting to hear of finding a hybrid model of having a business primarily off-grid. So that's a good way of describing it, hybrid model. I like that, that's a <laughs> good language. So, so um, um, yeah, anyway, it uh, sounds like the, 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 they're enjoying the show. <laughs> that's good. Um, uh, I mean, uh, go ahead, sorry. The, um, the whole farm started out with that off-grid um, ethic. Right and um was continually underpowered right. so you know there's a whole lifestyle around being less impactful so being off grid originally and we've we've carried through with a lot of those philosophies and practices like we all of the scraps go to the chickens and nice. not a lot goes off the farm not a lot of garbage goes off the farm oh, very it's cool. a, a lot of it recycled and reused or sent to the sent back to the animals or whatever to turn back into earth nice. so okay um that's all been carried forward even though we've tied to the grid because it makes our life slightly easier <laughs> fair enough yeah no that's that totally makes sense yeah i think that uh it's a, a very um empowering business that you guys uh have put together and i'm i'm constantly inspired by it so i just want to throw that out there how, how how are the how are the pictures looking there elizabeth is this accessible or are we kind of I don't have any pictures in my emails. Okay. So. Do maybe Ecart's okay with you showing us some old pictures? Is that uh, it sound Ecart? Are we cool? Oh, yes. Um, I, am I back on here? You're back <laughs> on. <laughs> we can, we, we can okay, great. I think my my internet faded for a moment. Okay. Um, uh, like I have, um, we have a couple of slideshows from like 2017. They're not quite as old as what I was showing you. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm I'm stoked. Mm. Okay, okay. So my tea's ready. So this I is like perfect timing. We get to see pictures. I get to enjoy tea with your with your with your mint. And Eckhart, e you need to you need to drink this tea too when it arrives, okay? And let me know what you think. Yeah. I bet you it's sitting up on the front porch right now. <laughs> okay, we see a lot of pictures here. This is great. Okay, cool. Okay. Oh, it's a whole PowerPoint okay. actually. I'm just gonna do that. Um, so let's change. Can we change the screen? Stop. A window. <laughs> this one. I have to pick this one. Share. I finally I figured out a way to send the new pictures to Elizabeth, so they'll be in her email within moments. Okay, amazing. <laughs> so we have we have we have options. But we'll go with whatever Got works it. here. And oh, there. Beautiful. Yeah. There's the farm. Stop sharing. This is a. Uh, I'm just. It's a PowerPoint, and I don't remember. It's been a so while since I've done a PowerPoint. If you hit F11, it helps to make it's this. In, it's on the bottom right. Yeah, on the bottom right, there's a uh, an enlarge the screen kind of option. Your present mode. Okay, but I can. I, oh, there we yeah, go. Oh, very nice. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm here for it. Let's listen. Uh, I'm listening. What, what are we looking at? This is the chamomile field. Um, they're so, row hoeing rows into the chamomile field in the spring. Okay. Very cool. I love your chamomile. There's the solar panels getting put up. Oh, wow. They're, oh, very good. There they good. are. So this is 20, uh, 2016 year. Yeah. Hmm. So we had 12 kilowatt system. Hmm. Oops. So this actually, if you want to stop, go back, go back Can I to. Go back? Uh, if you click yeah. on the left of the screen, it might it might be uh, your just friend. left click on your mouse. Oh, <laughs> so let's go back go back here to the 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 rojos. I wanted to talk about those quick. Oh, 
Okay. Your arrow um, keys might work too. Once you have the screen open, if you uh, press right and left with the oh, arrow okay. keys, that might actually uh, give you more flexibility. Okay, in, in your there process. you go. Okay, Rojos, let's hear it. So, uh, well, I, 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 there was another picture I wanted to stop at because we talk about the mulch as well. Uh -huh. um, so these tools here are tools that the first one we found at the local dump okay. and rebuilt. Um, and essentially, I don't know if Elizabeth can move forward in the presentation. Unfortunately, I have no control here um, to move forward uh, one more. Um, uh, yeah, there. So you, there's a sort of a little barrel with some spikes on it and then basically a stirrup hole behind. Mm -hmm. And that's our main tool for uh, keeping the pathways clear of weeds. Okay. And then you can see that the plants are, the plants are growing in a film mulch. So this is a biodegradable film mulch is made out of plant material oh. out of cornstarch oh very cool. um and by by current rules now we have to actually remove it at the end of the season but i, I still feel better about that than uh, using plastic so um which a lot of our crops are grown in uh, using plastic which is then discarded at the end of the season so Okay. this material at least will break down again it's plant plastic so that's been really critical for us this is early in the season here so things are kind of fairly brown toward the end of the season it'll look a lot um, greener than that so cool. i'm a little disappointed i couldn't share this year's pictures because our garden now uh, like five years later is way greener okay because uh, we're we're reducing tillage uh fairly significantly um and uh using cover cropping to improve our soil quality and just generally trying to move toward regenerative farming nice. so um what is what, what, is, what is regenerative farming I thought. Uh, so, so so um i i i'm learning about regenerative farming I'm about a year and a half or so into really trying to understand it but it's uh built on the idea of uh, respecting the soil uh, the, the soil is the foundation for an agricultural enterprise so uh, keeping the soil covered uh, keeping it in perennial plants as much as possible um, if you can integrating livestock into your operation mm. uh, for for um, you know just a, sort of a holistic approach but it it uh, it is also water conservation but it also includes um, the sustainability of the farm operation and, and how it's affecting the people working in the operation. Hmm. And so I, I think I know for ourselves in our journey, um, we are definitely making some progress in the soil health field. And we even saw that this year, we had the worst drought that we've ever experienced. Right. Yet um, we did pull off um, a pretty good crop. Um, you know, and in some cases it was a bumper crop Wow. And I think part of that speaks to uh, the improvements we made on soil management since this picture we're looking at. Exciting. That's really exciting. Uh, it reminds me, what you're talking about reminds me of some concepts that uh, my brother is really into um, organic landscapes and he, he talks a lot about uh, permaculture. Um, uh, is, are they interconnected? Uh, is there a elements of permaculture in regenerative farming? Uh, and maybe I shouldn't be asking you so many questions while you're showing me these pictures, but... Uh, just, uh, well, um, I just uh, this picture that's up here. I, I wanted to uh, mention that we are like it is a. Um, uh, uh, this is actually baling hay on a neighbor's uh, land, but um, it it's a small uh, farm that you know has all of the aspects of farming going on. So we're we're um, growing. We're not doing any uh, harvesting of grains, but we are making hay every year we have livestock so that's just also part of the farming operation that we do cool um so uh to your question about uh the differences between permaculture and regenerative farming um they're related um i think that regenerative farming is sort of thought of as it's the new buzzword in some ways but it is more broadly applicable like regenerative farming practices can be integrated into large-scale crop farming, uh, you know, grain canola. Uh, a lot of that has to do with keeping the soil covered as much as possible, doing no-till and integrating multi-species cover crops. Mm. Uh, permaculture is, is, more, is more specific and it, it is something that people have a lot of success with on small holdings and 
I don't want to get myself in trouble with uh, permaculture people by by speaking beyond what I know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it seemed like regenerative farming would work more uh, for us, you know, operating on on a on a bigger scale and on a more commercial scale. Makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. So what do we what do we see here? Uh, this is just a stack of hay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so th this is what I mean. This is another factor, of course, for people watching. You know, mm -hmm. from uh, different climates, uh, we have to put up feed for our animals for six months of the year. Makes sense. And uh, with, with the drought that we had this year, we had to bring our sheep in from pasture. Uh, probably at least two to three weeks early. So then we needed additional hay on top of that. Wow. Wow. Why, why, so. why, why have livestock? Uh, uh, what is the benefit for the farm for? You can just move through those pictures, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. These are Aww. with our install. So that's uh, our oldest, uh, Amber, uh, five years ago. She's now in grade five. Okay. Um, holding a couple of toads that fell into that trench. Well, that's the um, proof it's don't, organic. Don't I don't think they're going to be surviving in a poisoned, poisoned area. Well, um, toad, uh, so toads are in interesting about the toads, actually. Um, we are near the Pemina River. We actually, the garden is on the banks of the Pemina River. Wow. So, um, yeah, here we're picking red clover. Um, and I want to mention our volunteers, because uh, that's the volunteer in the picture there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, back to the toads uh, we're on the banks of the Pembina River the garden is actually in a river flat so that is beneficial on multiple accounts to allow us to do what we're doing the garden area is fairly small it's about a 15 acre opening in the forest so we get a lot of protection from the trees okay. so even though I'm not I uh, definitely have a lot to learn regarding permaculture and those practices um you know some of those just come into play in what we're doing and having the forest close to us plus we harvest some of the herbs in the forest yeah cool uh yeah. the the silty river bottom uh, land is well drained so that's ideal for growing herbs so we cool. we don't have a lot of uh and we're high enough that we don't have to worry about flooding with the river that we're on um and it's of course a source for water so if we have a really dry year we can water from the river Cool. Now the toads, uh, of course, they like that riparian area, and there's a there's a trail leading to the garden along a creek, and just full of toads. You'll go at nice. night, there'll be 10, 12 toads. So we have toad hours. Um, basically, as soon as the sun goes down, you're not really allowed to drive on the trail because you might drive on a toad. Oh, and okay. we're very we're devastated if we drive on a toad. Yeah, so we, for sure. If we absolutely have to go, we're going super slow, bright headlights and move them off the trail but we typically just avoid traveling so toads are kind of uh, protected uh, at our farm we really that is so special them. that's awesome cool so so um uh, but uh, wanted to mention with the volunteers uh, we've been working with the wolf program mm. uh, so willing workers on organic farms uh for uh since 2012 2013 Cool. And we've just met um, so many amazing people through that program. And so, uh, um, oh, a range of ages, but typically younger people traveling, um, uh, a lot of foreign people from uh, England, Germany, Switzerland, Japan, um, United States, all over. Very cool. Uh, so Very they're, cool. they're an integral part of what we do in the summer and also the experience that we have in summer. Um, and um, that's something we actually kind of missed this year be with the, um, uh, you know, with the international travel uh, bans in place. Right. Uh, we didn't have very many people coming to our farms. So we're hoping next year that will pick back up again. That must have been quite a, yeah, quite a big, I mean, the, the, the pandemic uh, I impacting um, your ability to have people come in and, and help out on the farm and the way that you uh, were, were seeing happen before. Um, you know, just to speak to the, the we also at Jagged Silk have a no-kill rule. Um, if we ever have any any pests, um, like uh, flies or what have you, they uh, it's a catch and release program we do. <laughs> just <laughs> outside, <laughs> they go outside. <laughs> That's awesome about yeah. the toads. Um, okay, so what are we seeing here? It's interesting. Oh, sorry, go ahead. That you, that you say that. Yeah. 
Well, you know. Okay. Um, why do we need to kill anyone? Just more speaking than... to what you just said, we <laughs> kind of do the same. Like, uh, we, we we do the same like we you know if, if at all if we don't need to kill it we don't i mean sometimes you just you have to deal with pest issues yeah um and uh you know sometimes you can do stuff like feed the grasshoppers to the chickens and then they make eggs and stuff like that but, sure um we definitely try to respect life as much as possible so what you're looking at uh, in the image on the screen is um our herb harvester so that's a machine that i built mm. um and I mean, Elizabeth's always part of all of this because she supports me in doing all of this. Uh, I'm at the farm working right now and she's taking care of our kids. So, um, and making sure that uh, Amber goes to school and stuff. So it's definitely a team effort. For sure. um, but the herb harvester was one of the tools that uh, we added to our operation that just allowed us to really speed up harvest. So something that took uh, eight or 10 person hours we could do in an hour uh with the herb harvester okay so that was that's a huge difference class. that's a huge difference huh i'm always amazed at, at, at what these little tweaks can do like if you kind of analyze as a business where you're putting in all of your time um and if you can come up with some sort of solution for for streamlining that like i kind of compare it to the laundry machine you know like just how much time that must have opened up for society like there's some loss there in terms of the communal sort of gathering around the, the washing areas, but uh, the efficiencies that it built and the, uh, the ability to spend that time on, 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 on different projects is, is quite, a, quite an, uh, an amazing phenomenon. And I can only imagine going from hand harvesting or whatever it was you were doing before you had that machine to using that machine must have been just like night and day. Yes. Yes, uh, I, I was mean, when super you happy. Up, you <laughs> have to find those efficiencies just up there. Uh, yeah, things have to go faster. Um, our our water wheel planter was another tool, uh, sort of a common market garden uh, tool that we added three or four years ago. And, uh, you know, again, sort of a, a step change in production speed. Okay. Um, I tried to send uh, Elizabeth a picture. Uh, hopefully it's, we're getting some of the current pictures up here soon. Nice. Um, Somehow I've gotten into my photo stream, so I'll just pick out pictures. So yeah, from there's the um, awesome. Okay, perfect. You meant you mentioned the communal aspect of washing there, Jared. Yeah. And, um, uh, I wanted to mention that too in regard to what, what we do on the farm. Um, we have uh, the opportunity for people, uh, uh, like our volunteers and people, who visit the farm. Uh, to participate in these communal activities like they still occur on our farm. So, uh, you know, here we're, I think we're harvesting something. <laughs> That's an orange bag. Well, this is, uh, this is the potatoes we dug uh, with. Uh, it looks like. Potatoes. Oh, yeah, this, yeah, this is the first round of potato digging. Nice. So that's a perfect example. Um, we actually uh, every year have something we call a potato dig, and we donate. Um, uh, this year was four and a half thousand pounds of potatoes that we donated to local organizations. Oh, wow! Um, that we you know we grew um, within the garden. So here also you can see in this picture when you look past the tractor how green the garden is. Yeah. Um, so that kind of kind of shows just how and and you know when you look at the surrounding area our, our pastures in the background they're fairly brown mm -hmm. uh, but the garden remained really green so wow. partly due to the irrigation uh, and partly i think due to the regenerative practices that we're starting to incorporate so cool wow this is it's just a, looks like such a beautiful um landscape and i imagine when it's not smoky and all crazy from the fires the air must just be beautiful okay. that is so cool okay so what are, what are, um um i uh i've actually gone quite a, a a bit over because i'm just so fascinated uh, by what you guys are showing me but um is there maybe uh uh just um two or three other things you want to show me or or what what um what uh i believe there i feel like we could talk for 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 hours and it would just be so fascinating and interesting um uh, but i only asked for your time until two o'clock so i feel like I've, I've 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 gone over it quite a bit right now um 
but yeah, uh, maybe you want to um, end with maybe two or three more photos uh, uh, that we could discuss, and then uh, then we can. There's the beautiful air. There's the beautiful. Oh no, <laughs> is that the that was the forest fires? No, no, oh. that's a sunset. Oh, okay, that is real. Okay, good. Thank goodness. That is beautiful air. Okay. <laughs> I think Legitimate. our daughter was taking those pictures. I often lose my phone and find it in my children's hands. <laughs> okay, there you go. Amazing photographers. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it was uh, my 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 family. I, I uh, went to school in, in in the Okanagan for middle school and high school, and and they live in Vernon, and and um, and the fires this year were just quite intense. And I remember speaking to Eckhart about uh, how that impacted how things grew for you guys when the smoke was just really intense. Yeah, it wasn't too bad this year. Sorry, go. Yeah, in 2018, uh, we noticed a significant effect from forest fires because we were under smoke for about two weeks. Okay. Uh, so we had we had some, you know, probably 10, uh, 10 to 20 percent yield reduction uh, across everything that year. Okay. Um, this year, fortunately, it was fairly short lived. Uh, the intense period of smoke. Um, so I, th I think the heat was much uh, more critical this year. And we had crops like our chamomile. We just we simply didn't get the yields that we we would normally get. Fair enough. Um, and uh, like um, I know you were using spearmint, uh, and we, we just don't have very much because that garden uh, is uh, in a different field from our main garden and didn't have access to water. Oh. Uh, so in normal years, that it was kind of low lying ground. It's really good for mints, and normally there's enough ambient moisture in the soil and with rain and everything. So you'd be fine, um, but. Elizabeth, you have a picture in the top right of your screen there. It says August 4th. Maybe just put that up and, and leave it. I, I, I don't think we'll be successful finding. Yeah, it's a panoramic picture, but it kind of shows different things. Or irrigation ah, in the garden. That's a... Oh, wait. oh, it's a video. I see. Yeah. Video. Are you... If, if the... If the uh, pictures that I sent you didn't come through, maybe we'll just leave the pictures. Uh, that didn't quite work. Jared, you'll have to... <laughs> Okay. You'll have to have us. Oh yeah, yeah, let's stop there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. yeah. That's love. You guys, this has been adorable. Oh, I love. I feel like I'm getting a glimpse of uh, life at Chickadee. Um, it's, Here, uh, we'll end on a garden picture, maybe. Uh, okay. I don't know why it it pulls up the picture and then goes to a white screen. Oh I yeah. I, no. I would just end the pictures, please. There. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so this is this is the farm. Um, Fantastic. So yeah, hopefully we can uh, we can get up uh, to see you guys and, and and check this out in person. But um, is there any final comments you guys wanted to make before we we close off the show today? Um, for my part, I've been I've been just so overjoyed. Like this has been such an awesome show, and I've been really enjoying um, uh, going through these pictures and talking with you guys. But yeah. Well. Uh, <laughs> For myself, um, I would say just you know thank you for having us on, and it, it's it's nice uh, to talk uh, with you and um, to get the feedback. You know, um, the feedback is is what keeps us going to a certain extent, and just trying to make really good quality herbs. Mm -hmm. um, it it is you know it is a tough go sometimes uh, with with where we work and the distance that we are from from a center to. Uh, get people to help us and then you have you know big challenges happening like climate change and covid and things like that so right uh, uh well you know if if the the warm weather this summer can be attributed to that but we do see those swings so i know you you wanted to, uh, to touch on that as well yeah and, uh, yeah we we certainly do see those big <laughs> swings so it's it's positive in the sense that our growing season is getting longer mm. so we're able to start to grow things and have things over winter that just didn't winter 20 years ago uh but yeah if you want to know if climate change is real talk to a farmer <laughs> yeah right <laughs> we hear it a because, lot from uh from the farmers in japan uh they, yeah they talk about very wild conditions that they just there's just no historical for them anyways, a uh, 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 basis to, to, to even interact with. They're just like, wow, you know, like very different frost times, very different uh, uh, sprouting times, very different, like it's just so wild and just kind of learning to, it's like, uh, as cliche as it sounds, it's like the new normal for them. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Yes. Um, so I think I would end, uh, you know, or wrap uh, up, you know, just saying the work that we do and, uh, you know, it, it could be vegetable farming, it could be livestock farming, just basically being able to farm, having the opportunity to farm mm -hmm. uh, and being in touch with the land uh, and, you know, what we're doing, uh, planting plants into the ground and harvesting them from our land and from the forest. Uh, we, we're so um, in tune or, or, you know, in contact with, with the real world, with the natural world. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to be able to produce things that, uh, you know, produce things that people are using for their health and for their comfort, like a nice warm cup of tea yeah. at the end of the day is, is really nice. And then the people we get to work with, you know, the people who come to work at our farm uh, to volunteer, the people that we hire and uh, to work with our customers as well. So it's uh, definitely a rewarding lifestyle through some of the uh, non-garden pictures there you saw it's a family business yeah, we try to sure. get into it as much as we can as well uh, so yeah we're just uh, trying to uh, keep going with it I think when I look back at the 30 years or so that we've been doing uh, this uh, one of the constants uh, there are many but one of the constants is that we're here you know, we're doing it. It's real. Right. Yeah. You're still there. You're still, you know, that's, there's something to be said about that. A lot of, a lot of businesses, um, uh, are, are done five years in they're gone. Right. So it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty cool that you, that you're, you're still there. And, and, and for our part, we're, we're, we're super glad, <laughs> um, because every year I feel like, uh, not only am I getting consistent, uh, lead beautiful herbs from you guys, but I feel like they, 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 they are improving. Um, and they have a certain chi to them. When you're um, when you're looking for a good tea, you often um, it's been taught to me that you look for a vibrancy or an energy. And uh, I believe that what you guys are producing really has that, and that's 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 amazing. So, El um, Elizabeth, did you want to speak uh, to anything? Uh, did you want to have uh, any final comments? Um, and also, could you um, let people know if they want to get some herbs from you guys, uh, if they want to go on your web store, etc., where they might find you? Sure. Um, I guess Eckhart probably said it, but thanks for having us on. And totally. it's been a pleasure to meet you virtually anyways. Yeah, well, this <laughs> is our first time really uh, meeting uh, over video, right? We've, we've talked yeah. on the phone a bunch. We've but... chatted on the phone a bit, but I don't think I've ever seen your face. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> for sure. Um, so that's really nice. And um, if you want to buy stuff from us, the probably the best way to do it is to go to our online store, which is um, our website is www.chickadeefarmherbs.ca. Cool. And in there, there's a shop tab. So you can go on there and shop through there. Mm. It's probably the best way to do it. And, uh, and, and, and go and check out some of your lovely teas. And uh, yeah. Yeah, if you want to get chamomile uh, from Chickadee this year, that's the way to do it. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> <Yes>. It's not <laughs> finding its way to, to, to us wholesalers. <laughs> but but that's, that's awesome. Um, thank you uh, again, uh, Elizabeth um, Eckhart, for coming on the show. Um, it's been... Um, it's it, it, it's been Yay. lovely um yeah if you want to also uh, it looks like we lost uh sister speak during the, the 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 conversation um but uh if you want if those that are interested can go and watch her patreon.com slash sister speak she's on every week has uh often a, a, a lot of interesting conversations and suggestions and topics to touch, discuss so we missed her at the end there um, but uh, I also wanted to you to know that one of our viewers watching says that they found the session extremely inspiring. So um, it's nice, uh, nice to get that feedback. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I look forward to working with you guys far into the future. Let's, uh, let's hope 30 years on, uh, you know, we're still, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's happening. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thank you so much to you both. Um, you have a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, uh, rest of your day. And uh, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll catch up soon, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Bye, Bye, guys. Take care. See you. Okay, so that was, uh, that was um, uh, Elizabeth and Eckhart from Chickadee. Um, really uh, fun show, looking at some of their videos and pictures and discussing uh, their their life uh, farming up in uh, uh, north of Edmonton in Alberta here in Canada. Um, uh, that was, yeah, really, really good times. If you want to check out a tea 
that we have right now. There's two of them that use uh, some of their herbs. Um, we have a peppermint uh, yuzu elderflower that uses peppermint that they grow. Um, and we also have a honey bush, marshmallow root, and uh, uh, um, raspberry leaf. And the raspberry leaf is grown by them. Um, that was a collaborative project that we did with Sister Speak. Um, it's called Singer's Delight, is uh, what uh, she's named the, the tea blend. So you should totally go and check that out as well. So thank you so much uh, for, for joining us today. We'll see you next week. Uh, we'll be 1 o'clock, same Jaga time, same Jaga channel. Uh, we broadcast to Facebook, um, uh, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, when we see you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and uh, catch, catch up soon. And don't forget to hit the subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, do the subscribe. It really helps. <laughs> see you later.